Greetings YouTubers, I'm Rick the Tech Enthusiast here with the next Elegoo lesson number 14, IR Receiver Module. In this lesson, we'll become familiar with the Infrared Receiver Module and the Infrared Remote provided with the Elegoo Kit. We'll build and configure a simple circuit that is provided in the tutorial to demonstrate the functionality. So let's start building. The Infrared Receiver Module that's included in the kit is different than an ordinary infrared receiver diode in that it has a tiny pre-amplifier integrated circuit tuned to receive infrared codes at 38 kilohertz. You can find other infrared receivers that are tuned to different frequencies that range from 30 kilohertz to 56 kilohertz, but ours is 38 kilohertz. This kind of unit has the advantage of ignoring other frequencies that may give an ordinary infrared receiver false signals or false positives. Both have a light filter, which gives it its sort of dark color and can be purchased for different wavelengths of light. This module is rated for 940 nanometers of wavelength. If you'd like to learn more about infrared receivers, check out the Andreas Spies, the guy with a Swiss accent, video guide for infrared communication. And then there's the EEB blog on the IR Remote Control Arduino Protocol tutorial. And of course, the tutorial and the data sheets have some additional information on the IR receiver module, and I encourage you to check them all out. For this lesson, we'll need the following items from your kit. The Elegoo Arduino Uno R3 board. The IR receiver module the IR remote, three female to male jumper wires. On page 104, you'll see the following schematic. A jumper will be connected between the data pin to pin 11. Then there's just power and ground. Super simple. On page 105, you'll see the wiring diagram with a photo on page 106. Note, we're not going to use the breadboard. We're going to directly connect the jumpers between the Arduino and the IR receiver module. Okay, let's jump to the code. As before, we'll load the recommended sketch provided in the tutorial. Go to the file menu item, select open, then browse to where you save the Elegoo files. Under your language, code, under Lesson 14, IR Receiver Module, IR Receiver Module, and open the irreceivermodule.ino file. Looking at the code, you see that it begins with a new library, irremote.h. To verify you have this library, go to the Sketch menu item, select Include Library, and you should be able to see if you have the IR Remote already installed. Hmm. I don't seem to have this library. Looks like we'll need to install this one. This is where I normally would recommend adding the library provided with the Elegoo files. But if you look inside the zip file and open up the IR remote and then the IR remote.h, you'll see that this version is 1.0. Luckily, there's a website provided in the library. Unfortunately, the link is dead. Or it cannot be found. But if we do a little sleuthing, we can find it on the web after all. And there's a link to the location to the latest version, version 2.2.3 over at GitHub. Okay, we have two options now. We can do it the hard way or the easy way. First, let's try the hard way. We could select the green clone or download button and then select download zip. Many browsers work differently, but my browser has a small option window so that I can tell it what to do with the file. And then I just select save as and select the appropriate directory to download the zip file. I would even rename it to irremote.zip. Back in the Arduino IDE, I would then select the sketch menu item, then select include library, and then select add zip library. I would go to where I saved the irremote.zip file, select it, and click the open button. Now the easy way. 
If we select the sketch menu item and then select include library and now select manage libraries. We haven't done this in the past. Let's check it out. We get the manage libraries window. In the upper right hand corner is a search bar. Enter IR remote and hit enter. The manager will then list all the available libraries that, are, that may or may not have been installed. And one of them is selected and an option to install the latest version will appear. Click install button. Now this is the easiest way and this is the method I will use. Once you have it installed, you may need to restart your Arduino IDE. The next line is an integer global variable receiver and it's set to equal 11. That's probably for pin 11. And then it instantiates two objects, infrared receiver, which gets passed an integer value 11 stored in the variable receiver and an object results as an instance of decode results. Then we have a function void translate IR. Here it uses a switch statement to perform a serial print based on a hexadecimal value stored in the results variable. Otherwise, it will provide a generic other button response if any other values are present. This is followed by a small delay. The void setup starts with setting up the serial monitor and then sending out an initial message to the serial monitor and enabling the IR receiver object. The void loop checks to see if there's any IR receiver results. The ampersand in front of the variable name allows the method to update or modify the variable itself. If decode was true, run translate, then ready the infrared receiver to resume receiving signals, and then it loops. Let's upload the code and try it out. Okay, so then I open up the serial monitor and the initial message comes up. IR receiver button decoded. Now go ahead and press through all the button numbers. Zero through nine, two, three, four, five, six, seven, there you go, eight, nine. And then I'll do the function button, starting with power, volume, all the way through and all the way across. Fast forward, volume, up, equalizer, EQ, repeat. And now I'll hold down the button, oh, uh, hold down the zero button here. I'll let it repeat. There it goes. Now I'll hold four. And I'll hold seven. Excellent, that seemed to be working well. Huh, I wonder if a different remote would work. I'll have to try one. So I went to grab a couple of my other remotes and what do you know, the very first remote I grabbed worked. It's from my Vizio TV. What the nice feature about that is it has a full keyboard on the back. It would be pretty cool to use um, if you had a project that needed that much functionality. Let's try it on this uh, circuit and check it out. All right, so I'm trying my Vizio and I'm pressing some buttons, my Vizio remote. And yeah, sure enough, none of the codes obviously come up. They all come up as other button. Huh, wouldn't that be nice if we, were, if we could see that? Let me change this line of code so that it will show the, the code for um, any other buttons that come up. So we'll do a serial print. And we'll add, no, we'll add the, oh, the result, results value. Copy this and we'll paste it here. Oh, do we need the quotes here? What am I thinking? And now let's just upload this and see how it changes it.
All right back to the serial monitor. I'll press uh, one of the buttons. And there is the code. Oh, oh shoot, I should have made that a print line. So let me go back to the code here real quick. Make that a print line. And let's upload that. That was quick. Go back to the serial monitor. Press a button. Excellent, yes. So if you wanted to, you could press a bunch of these buttons, get the code you need, and voila, you can use another remote. Pretty cool, I think that's pretty neat. Well, that's it for this lesson. I hope you've enjoyed learning a little about the infrared receiver module and the infrared remote. If you like this sketch, be sure to let me know in the comments section below. I'll have additional links for other interesting videos and the code for this project in the show notes below. Join me next time for lesson 15, Max 7219 LED dot matrix module. If you like this video, don't forget to rate and subscribe. I'll try to put out a new video each week. Thanks and see you next time.